All right, good morning and welcome to the video. So been a little bit since I've done a vlog just because we've got a lot of family stuff going on. We had a getaway for the Virtuous Fitness team. I had a friend in town from Virginia uh, came out to visit. He is currently off doing some hiking at the Rainier National Park. So uh, gonna try to get a vlog in today and take you guys through the day. So. Uh, this morning we're getting up. We're getting ready to go do our half marathon training. I've got six miles. I believe Megan has five and uh, I believe I Thought she was coming um, So we've got our Half marathon training this morning. Like I said, I've got six miles. She's got five and uh, we're just getting up We're getting coffee in us and we're gonna be on our way to go after that. I have some meetings we were looking at possibly taking on some interns at Virtuous Fitness. I'm going to share with you guys just some of the things that we look through there. So we've got a couple meetings for that and then we've got jujitsu this evening. So nice busy day. I'm going to take you guys with me and uh, let's get into it. We are just getting to the start of our run and neither one of us feel like running. But we're going to do it anyways just because we know that on October 8th I'd rather be prepared than not. So she is going to, she's going five miles, I'm going six and um, we're going to hit our warm up and then we'll report back when we're done. Uh, post run recap, didn't feel too good today. Okay, how, how'd you run feel? <laughs> she felt great. I operated outside of my normal realm of operation this morning. Didn't have any electrolytes, didn't have any Gatorade. Probably could have drank a little bit more water and I didn't do that. So about two and a half miles or so in, had to walk, just felt extremely dizzy. Um, didn't want to be that guy that passed out on the side of the road. Heart rate wasn't out of control. It was literally just felt dizzy, felt like just dehydrated and, and just like almost like I had low sugar or low blood sugar. Um, ended up just kind of combating that and then battling through that mentally and then found a rhythm and was able to get back on my like 8 to 8.30 pace per mile. Um, and now we're done. Total time, about 55 minutes. Went about 6 miles. And we're done. So we're going to go home, eat breakfast, probably have another cup of coffee, get some water and some carbs in me, and then we'll be off to the gym. Show YouTube your glasses. Say what's up. What's up? All right, so we are packed. I'm gonna grab the coffee because as we leave our driveway and kind of go up this little hill at the edge of our driveway, it's very bumpy and it's a tragic coffee spill spot. This one has <laughs> spilled coffee numerous times as we go up this hill. So we are all packed up. We are going, uh, my, like I said in the beginning of this video, I've got a friend in town that currently has my wife's vehicle. Um, we're her two car family and uh, they've got her vehicle and they're spending some time at the national park while they're in town. So this means that 
She is Miss Frizzle and she takes me and that dude where we need to go. So she's taking me to work so that I can get some stuff done at the gym today and the youngest is going to daycare so that she can do adult things and keep the keep continuing to get the house in order. So we're underway, heading to the gym. We'll see when we get there. If I start digging now, I'll be done real soon. I'm a dirt separator. I'm an So we are at the gym and we are getting set for the day. So I've always tried to keep somewhat of a set schedule as far as like themes are concerned, just because like a lot of times inside of the gym space or, or just coaches in general, when you're kind of like hopping from thing to thing, it's really hard to give anything like a real solid effort just because you never allow yourself to being something long enough to get into like a flow state. So for a long time I operated in this place where like my Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays were days that I would do all of my coaching, all of the personal training clients that I had and then meetings. More like like client facing or team facing stuff would happen on those days. And then what I would do because we have jujitsu on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because those were jujitsu specific days in the evenings, because we don't have day sessions yet, I would spend most of my mornings recording podcasts, shooting videos, doing any sort of editing that I need to do. Basically, all of my creative work would happen on those days, just because I, I could have this big block of time after I would take my kids to school for the day where I could be alone and get into my thoughts and to really be creative, which is something we have to be in the entrepreneurial space just to make sure that we're always pushing our businesses forward. So that was pretty much the schedule that I stayed to for a long time. What I decided as I rolled into the summer is that I'm in this place where I'm starting to realize that like my kids are growing really fast and that I have got this gym to a place where it runs pretty well without me being here 24 seven. So I actually took my foot off the gas a little bit and spent a lot more time at home with my kids and my family and just enjoying time off, going out on our boat. You, you guys have seen we've done lots of trips, just spending a lot of time doing that. And um, as we're getting closer and closer to summer coming to a close, kids are getting ready to go back to school, I'm starting to start to look at my schedule and dial it back in again so that I can get back to the grindstone and start working and hustling again and pushing things forward. For me, I've always kind of thought of these periods as this, and I actually got this from a mentor, as uh, basically produce and protect. We can't spend all of our time in this state where we're just like producing, 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 creating without any time just sitting back and protecting the things that we produce. So I've been in this protect period all summer and I'm getting ready to roll back into another produce period. And then obviously you guys are gonna be with me. You're gonna be able to see all the behind the scenes in that. So anyways, we're at the gym for the day. I've got a bunch of meetings scheduled for this morning. And then we've got jujitsu, like I said at the beginning of this video this evening. Gonna try to work in a little bit of lifting as well. Got that scheduled for around lunchtime. So we'll see how things go with that. But got a lot of meetings coming up. I'm gonna do some creative stuff here at the gym office. And then um, I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. All right, bunch of meetings already done for the day. We have um, basically a meeting with somebody in a little bit to just talk to them a little bit about our internship here at the gym. But while I'm waiting, I wanted to do something awesome. I wanted to give you guys a grand tour of the gym. So come with me, let's go take a walk. Coach's office is here. Consultation office with our in-body machine here. This also is where the magic happens the grappling side we have both kids and adult programs that go on in here custom geese were something that we did last year
and the main workout floor. All right, meetings are done. No workout happened today. And that's all right, just because, you know, generally on Tuesdays, which which what today is, is jujitsu night. So I already got my six miles in for running this morning. I knew I had a pretty heavy schedule as far as appointments were concerned today. And uh, this evening, jujitsu, you know, I've got jujitsu from about four o'clock until almost eight o'clock. So we've got a good four hours of movement still that's gonna happen. So. Training session didn't happen today, which is kind of a, the ugly little kept secret that a lot of gym owners don't talk about is that sometimes your fitness is a little hard and difficult to get in. But I'll get some rolls in for jujitsu and that should work and I'll record a bunch of it as well. But I wanted to hop back on here and just talk about a very simple thing. So the past two days we have had meetings with possible coaches that want to come on the team here with us at Virtuous. And if there's anything that we really protect, it's who comes into this team. We, we had this saying that we always say that team culture dictates gym culture. For us, we knew that how we operate as a team, our value systems, the way that we show up every single day is ultimately going to drive the culture that we want here at the gym. So it's very important that as we allow people to come into our world, that they value wise, that their reasoning behind doing certain things actually aligns with us. Now, how we hire people always starts off the same way. We always set a one-on-one -on -one appointment up with them where both my manager and I sit there and we discuss different things and just kind of go over basically what we're looking for inside of our internship and with any coach that comes on board. So there's a couple questions that I always ask them. The first one I start off with is their why. Like why do they want to become a coach? What I'm looking for there is does their why and their purpose as to why they want to be a coach, does it align with what we do? Is it something that's a passion project for them? Are they looking to make more money? Do they want to open up their own gym one day? <clears throat> Are they looking for notoriety? Are they looking for like just self purpose, whatever that reasoning is, I wanna know what it is because I have to make sure that for the for me, the owner and the leader and the, the, chief, the chief vision officer of our business, I have to make sure that their why and their purpose for wanting to become a coach, I have to make sure that it aligns with what we do. So that's the first place I start. Second thing I ask them is like, what do they want, right? Are they looking to coach nutrition only? Are they looking to coach weightlifting or do they want to coach a large group? Do they want to build a business inside of my business? Like, I, I just want to know what they are looking to get accomplished for them. Like, what do they want? That's a hard question because a lot of people haven't actually thought that far through. And a lot of times it comes down to like, you know, they're, they're, they're looking to pay it forward some of the things that they learn and you know, that would fulfill a, a thing for them. So what they want is usually the next place. And then from there, we always have to make sure that for us, before they become anybody who is even remotely close to being on our team, they have to be part of our community and our culture first before they ever get an opportunity to be on our team. And for some people, that can be a little bit of a challenge for them to wrap their mind around is just, nobody on our team right now is a part of our team that wasn't part of the gym first. That's the only way that they're gonna basically fit into our culture. That's the only way our clients are gonna accept them to be in front of them. And that's different from pretty much any other business or service-based thing out there. And it's something that for us, we have never really found ourselves in this place where we needed to hire somebody quickly out of necessity because we've just grown organically. People see what we do. People love how we take care of our clients. People love the value system that we stand for, our programs, our offerings. They just love all of it and they end up wanting to just be a part of it. So as people are moving from either being a client into our internship or this gentleman we met today who was a past client who was just looking to come back and coach, the encouragement was, what, you know, why do you want to become a coach? What do you want? And are you okay with being part of the team and the culture? For, or are you okay with being a part of the community first if you're not? So those are things that we kind of look for. These meetings are meant for us to make sure that they match our value system and they can stick up to our standards. So a little long-winded, but it was something that was just kind of on my mind and it was really cool just because when I started this gym a number of years ago, it was 
pretty much me doing everything by myself. And what we've been able to do just very strategically is every time somebody's come on board our team, we've ran them through this filter of a value system and talked to them and it really vetted them to make sure that they fit and it's really helped us to maintain an amazing culture and a culture of progress on this team to where you know excellence is a must and we're always working on moving forward with that so anyway meetings are done we've got jujitsu coming up next our kids started about 4 30 then we have the uh virtuous grappling sorry the virtuous grappling little kids start at 4 30 and then the kids group comes in at five and then we got adults from six to about seven seven thirty so all that will be going on um, i primarily run the kids program still and have uh one of our coaches john who actually uh, coaches classes and helps to kind of run it alongside me and he'll be leading some of the warm-up stuff tonight as you'll probably see if we're able to get some content of that but nonetheless meetings are done jiu-jitsu is coming up next and um I'm going to go get ready for that. The side you don't see. Keegan, <laughs> Keegan, I want you to remember this. <laughs> All right, 
we were finishing up spawning right. I want to introduce you guys to the person who makes these things, Mr. Keegan. So I told him I wanted to create a vlog. I sent him a couple videos and that dude literally made exactly what I wanted. So Keegan, appreciate you bro. Appreciate let's, you. let's go over to, this is dad, AKA Professor Sean. So Professor Sean came two years ago. Ish. October, yeah. October would be two years. Two years ago, and he came in, and I said, Professor, can I roll with you? He looked at me and said, if you hurt me, I'll effing kill you. And as a 34-year-old man... I'm way older than 34. <laughs> I hadn't had a person talking to you like that in a long time. And then he proceeded to wipe the floor with me for a good solid five minutes, and then probably for the next year and a half until he uh, can't see it, until he hurt his foot. But um, I went home that night and literally was like, Megan, this dude just came and whipped my butt, and I don't know jujitsu. And now Professor Sean leads us. So, finishing up a little of the mat. Professor Sean showed some back escapes tonight. Super cool. that is it for the day YouTube my wife aka mom for the day come to pick me up after school we had a long day of ooh, look who we had back there Preya Gunner oh, a couple of huskies back there <laughs> so we had a lot of meetings today and more meetings talking with new interns and then a long night of jujitsu and we're finishing up and we're going home it is 8 15 that's some of the things they don't talk to you about when you're starting a gym is how long you will be working every single day to build your dreams and to do the things you want to do and hopefully if you're anything like me you have a woman that only gives you a little bit of crap and believes in your crazy dreams and only gets mad at you a little bit when you're at the gym all day. But we're done, we're heading home, we are doing dinner, and then uh, off to bed and doing it again tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. One thing my editor told me that I need to request is that hit the subscribe button, um, like the video, comment, give me some feedback. Um, these videos are meant because I was inspired by a couple other people who just shared their journey, and, and this is something I wish I had started 10 years ago at the beginning of my journey with owning gyms and being married to this one and being a dad and all these different things. I wish I had documented all of it. So, uh, you know, what's better the, you know, forget the saying, what is it like? When's the best time to start something? Is the day before and the next best time is today? I don't know. In, in my head, it sounded a lot cooler than it really came out. But nonetheless, um, just gonna document the journey document everything that we do at the gym and hopefully somebody can get some value from it and um, Again hit the subscribe button. Give me some feedback. Give me a like and then I'll see you guys on the next video